or fabricated like similarly, Cameron, you unless you're Eric and yeah, voice, it doesn't you know, seem <laughs> different way of doing it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this is the round fish. We'll do that in a second. You good? Okay. Yeah. So the round fish. This is actually a striped bass. And the way that you can tell that this is a purebred uh, striped bass is because there's a lateral line. You can see this line right here that looks different than the other stripes. It looks like it has little holes in it. The lateral line is a sensory organ. Whenever you see a schooling fish turn, they all turn at the same time. It's kind of like echo sounding. It allows them to be kind of attached to each other exteriorly. Um, so they swim and they feel it and they all turn in the same way. And the way that you can tell that this is not a hybrid striped bass or not farm raised is that generally when there's a, actually this is hybrid. See this little jagged line here? For some reason when they crossbreed them, the hybrid striped bass have this little discontinuation in the line. A purebred striped bass, striped bass has a line that goes all the way down. I have no logical explanation as to why that is, but that's what we do. Uh, in terms of the freshness of the fish, when you're looking for really fresh fish, see in the fin right here, there's a little red, that's blood in the fin. That's a sign of a really fresh fish, and that's ideally what you want to see. So look at the fins first. The fins, if the fish starts to break down from the outside and then starts to come to the interior. The reason that the fish has been eviscerated is because <clears throat> the fish is going to break down from the guts. The guts are going to digest and continue to digest. So you want to get all that stuff out. This is a cool thing in here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little, a little void up there. See that, that hollow pocket? That's the swim bladder. And the swim bladder, I just poked it, but the swim bladder is what allows the fish to have buoyancy. So if they want to go high, they fill it up so they can float and they push it out. Is that right? Yeah. Am I doing right? Yeah. Just checking in with my fish monster over there. Uh, all right, so then uh, let's talk about fins. Do you know the name of this fin? Dorsal fin. Good. What's the name of this fin? The back fin. Second dorsal, or if it's a trout, or in the salmonoid family, it's called the adipose fin. This is the caudal fin. The way that I remember the caudal fin is if the fish were to stand up and walk, it wouldn't walk because it doesn't have feet, but it would waddle on the caudal. Right, this fin is noted it's by this little anal. hole right here, which is the poop chute, so this is the anal fin, right? These are the pelvic fins, and these are called the pectoral fins. The first thing that we're gonna do when we cut this is we're gonna pull back the gill plate. So you can see, we're looking at the gills, another way of determining freshness is how red they are and how slimy they are. The slime shouldn't smell like fish. Whenever you feel fish and it has slime on it, it shouldn't smell fishy at all. That slime is actually a self-defense mechanism that the fish produces. When you see that classic shot of the bear trying to grab the salmon, they can't because it has this mucousy substance on the outside that it sheds to help prevent it from getting uh, bacterial contamination and from, from being caught. For us, we're going to pull it up and utilize that gill plate right behind the pectoral fence. So when I lift that up, you can see this plate. I'm going to cut in underneath the plate here, up into the head. The easiest way to move fish generally is by the eyes, but these are nice bulgy eyes. Generally, you can just put your hands right into the wow, You can put your fingers right into the eyes and hold on to them. You want to watch out for these dorsal fins because they can be really sharp, especially in fish like snapper or, or things like that. So you can pick them up like that and it's a little bit easier, or pick them up by the tail. So come up into the head. Then we're going to spin it to the side. You're going to make an incision coming down just above the dorsal fin all the way down to the caudal fin. So hold it up, cut through here, and what I'm doing is I'm going to use the flexibility of the knife to get in close to those bones, and I essentially just want to glide across those bones. Those are going to be my guidance system. And then I'm going to come in across the tail, not into my hand. What was so, the bone from the other side? Because uh, Star Wars poke from the side. Um, he's gonna be like that. He's gonna be that guy. All right. So now I can actually see those predorsal bones. So I'm gonna come down, follow those predorsal bones. Again, use the flexibility of your knife to follow it down to the vertebrae. So see, how I'm just coming in. I'm following those bones. If you come across them at, at too extreme of an angle, you'll actually cut in between them. So you want to go across several at one time. Then when I get down to the vertebrae, I'm going to come over the vertebrae and out the belly. So over the vertebrae and out the belly. Down, up, over, out. 
and then ride down those belly bones. You want to be really careful about bending the fish backwards because it's flexible and fragile. Fragile. Remember the email? It's French. Alright, and then take that off. Alright, so here's our side. And now, once you get the side off, you're going to do something called a J cut. There's a little bone right in this section. And it's kind of in a J shape. So if you can imagine, it's, it's shaped in the fish like that. So the J cut means that I actually come down this side here and around the bottom. And then I come in from the top again and I come on the outside. And then theoretically, I can either pull the bone out or I can just cut that meat that's surrounding it out. So I come in here, cut down against that bone down to the flesh. And don't cut through the flesh. All right, and then I'm gonna come on this side, do the same thing. See how I kind of move it in a J shape. Then I come underneath my first cut and I should be able to scoop that right off of the skin. Like that. So that's my, those are my bones. I want to make sure there's no bones in there. I keep the skin together so that I could use this as one whole portion. Generally when I'm serving fish, I leave the skin on it to the last minute because the bigger the fish is, the longer the shelf life is going to be. The more you do to it, the, the more detrimental that becomes to the overall quality. Why do we put fish on ice? It's cold. It's cold, right? And why? Obviously we want to keep it cold. Why do, why do we want to keep it colder than the cooler? Uh, temperature change. Temperature change zone. What is the common temperature of the water that the fish is swimming in? 40 degrees, right? So if we put it into our cooler at 40 degrees, then it's already used to that. The fat's going to break down. You want to create an atmosphere that kind of shocks the fat, like, oh, this is weird. I don't recognize what's going on here. It's cold. I can't break down, right? So that's why you put it on ice. Another trick to keeping fish longer is to stuff the cavity with ice and to set it upright because the fish is going to bleed down, right? So by setting it upright and packing it in ice, that's what's going to make it last longer. Also keep it surrounded because the skin will start to dry out. Whenever you serve fish, part of the reason of leaving the skin on is you can see that's, that's pretty skin, right? It's really nice. You can get that skin nice and crispy. Uh, you can either do it in schmaltz or you can do it in duck fat or bacon fat or that's going to just gotta make it delicious. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll sear it and then I'll serve one side skin up and one side skin down. Part of serving that skin up, if I'm serving it with the skin on, it's going to be easier for your service staff to know that this is the striper. It's also going to be easier for your customer to recognize that this is truly striper. Right? And that's how we basically are going to do that. We're going to, we might take the belly off a little bit. If you have any bones in there, you're going to come in underneath the bones in what I call the extreme motorcycle rev. And then you can take these pre-anal fin bones off too. Cool. So there's our, that's the, the one fillet, our action over here, little belliness. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you can either leave it like this. I find it's a little bit easier when you come in this way. I'm going to come in around the gill plates the same way, up into the head. And then I'm going to come down into the head here, do the same thing. Stick it in, just the tip. And just cut along those pre dorsal bones. And then just for Eric, if you wanted to come in from this side. <laughs> over the top and out. And then on this side, on the other side, I did it from a different angle. So this side I'm going to come in this way. I'm going to come in down those pre-dorsal bones. Really utilize the flexibility of your knife. Come in. The main thing about cutting fish is don't bend it back. Ever take a leather belt and fold it the opposite way and it causes it to crack? Fish is the same way. Chef, uh, your knife is a lot more flexible. Thanks. This is the old, these are the knives we used to have, and uh, then someone else taught me cutting for a segment, and they switched the knives. What do I do? I'm not going to Right, so I'm just following those belly bones out the same way. See how I'm, I'm keeping the whole thing in one uniform piece instead of flipping it back? Yeah, 
<laughs> now this one I did it a little differently. I cut some of that belly off here. So here's my here's my carcass. We're gonna deal with that in just a second. So now I'm gonna come in and do my J cut. this off and cut that back. And this is really great. This is good raw fish, belly fat. So take that off. You know, to remove the J-ball, is that something that you've seen or is that something that you're, like, you're just looking to make sure you don't go through the scan? Uh, you want to look to make sure you don't go through the scan. It's going to be easier to serve it so you can keep this together as a serving. right? Or you could put a stuffing in there. Or it just gives you more flexibility. Whenever you store fish, you want to put them flesh to flesh or skin to skin, right, so that you don't you reduce the risk of getting any scales. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is get the bones ready for stock. Do we want to put fins in our stock? No, why? Bitter. Bitter, right? Bitter and it makes it flour. So we're going to take our fins off. One of the easiest ways to take the fins off is either use a cleaver or if you have a pair of shears, just cut your fins off. So come back. How am I doing, Eric? Am I, am I okay? So, uh, do most fish like you receive come already scaled? You notice he didn't answer my question. <laughs> no. You don't want the answer? It depends. That's generally something that you would ask for. No, I'm assuming these are already scaled. These are already scaled. Yep. But I usually, when I do mine, I take the skin off. But it's just a nice. Lame. Lame. <laughs> Uh, all right, and then you're going to come in, insert the shears into the mouth, and cut the lower lip. And open up the head. Mm. Then you can open it up like this and make like a fish head buck belt buckle. Good. Yeah, I got a couple. So you want to take the, the gills out. The easiest way to take the gills out is to come in right here. You can cut right at the base. Make a cut there and then come in on this side. This is where you want to have a nice heavy duty pair of shears. So the gills come out. Same thing over here. Why do we take the gills out? It's a filter. It's a filter and it also makes your, your stock cloudy. And then what's the last thing we want to take out that can make your stock cloudy? The eyes. The eyes, right? So when we take out the eyes, the eyes are most easily removed from coming from the inside of the head. So you just press that head flat like that. And then there's a soft spot right behind the eyes. Generally, you just make a little incision here, here. And then you should be able to just like that. make that noise. You're just looking at you, Julie. <laughs> Right, so we get our eyes out, and then there's our pocket, pockets, our carcass ready for stock. Look at swimming. All right, that's the round fish.